I'm Ruth and this is my channel, So Dysfunctional. Uh, first I want to say a quick hooray, I'm back to those who have seen my videos before and to anyone who's new, welcome to my channel. Um, it's been a really long time since I made a video. I think the last one I put out was possibly the end of September. I had a lot of um, plans for the autumn, um, but my little girl started school in September and she managed a couple of weeks of settling in and one full week before they all got sent home to isolate for two weeks because of contact case of COVID. And I have to be honest that after that, my will and motivation to sew just completely left me. I think I managed to make a couple of the things that I was planning and I talked about in that video ages ago, but other than that, nothing got done. I basically didn't sew for the whole of October and November. I'm sure lots of people have been feeling the same. I know I've seen things on Instagram and other YouTube videos. People have been talking about their sojos just disappearing completely. I'm sure it is all part and parcel of the experiences that we're going through at the moment. Um, I found it really frustrating because in the back of my mind I really wanted to be doing something but I was just not up for it and I decided that if that was the way I was feeling there was no point in trying to make myself so because I probably wouldn't enjoy it that much. But when it got to December there were a few things that I wanted to make for people and I just felt like I wanted to be doing something. So what I did was I spent quite a lot of time doing little projects. I did have quite a long list of things that I was planning to make especially for family members for Christmas um, but again, I just ran out of time, I ran out of energy, um, and so most of those things, unfortunately, didn't materialise. I did make a couple of things, and I'll show you those. Um, and I'll keep those on my list, and hopefully I'll be able to slip them in um, over the next few months with some of the other projects that I'm hoping to get started on soon. So what I'm going to show you today is a bit of a mishmash of things that I have been doing, um, over the last few months towards the end of 2020 and hopefully there'll be a few ideas for you if you are feeling the same and feeling a real lack of motivation to sew um, of projects that you could perhaps dig out of your wardrobes or things that you could mend or just some something to help you get going again. I feel now like I'm just about ready to start doing some sewing again uh, to be honest, it means that I have to faff with some patterns and that's one of the things that really puts me off getting going is knowing that the patterns are going to need adjusting and tracing before I can even get around to cutting out fabric and quite often that means that I just don't get started at all. But I have been spending a lot of time thinking about sewing and that to me is normally a good sign that I want to get going again and once I do get some fabric out, get some patterns out, get some things sewn upon my machine that will make me start to feel better and want to carry on and make some more things hopefully in 2021. So the first thing I did uh, last uh, November to try and get myself going on my sewing machine was fix a whole pile of trousers. So I had a couple of pairs of jeans, my husband had a couple of pairs of trousers, um, I think possibly the kids had a few holes in things as well and they just needed a bit of a patch. So this is, I'll just show you a pair of jeans all I did with these was um, put a patch of, I think this is just a cotton drill, cotton twill fabric. And you can probably see it more easily actually on this side. I just went up and down with a zigzag stitch over anything that was um, either looking thin or worn or had actually um, ripped. So that's what it looks like on that side. That's on the inside leg, so you don't see that very much. Both of the knees had gone through and actually, since I've done this, this one has, as you can see, started to go underneath as well. I just tend to find that this um, very stretchy denim that's designed for these slim fit jeans is just not very hard wearing, unfortunately. So this is quite a common problem, especially as I've been in these jeans, oh, I don't know, I've had them a couple of years now and I've only had two or three pairs of trousers in rotation, so they have been worn a lot. But I will repatch up that knee and make sure that they are okay for a little bit longer. The next thing I did was fix a pair of pyjama bottoms. Now these are fat face pyjama bottoms. I really like the fat face ones, they just seem to be a good shape for me I don't know why they just are and they always fit quite nicely and I think I got these for Christmas 
few years ago now, um, but they've been sitting in a bag. I don't think I wore them last Christmas because the elastic at the back completely went. This was the elastic that I took out of them. You can see it is not looking at its best anymore. It's just totally overstretched. Basically, they just the trousers just kept falling down because the elastic at the back just wasn't holding anymore. So because they're um, they're flat fronted, there's no elastic across the front, but there is elastic across the back. So what I did with these, I just I just unpicked the waistband, took out the elastic, um, and put some new elastic in. Generally, when you sew on the waistband, you attach it to the outside first. You turn it in, and then you um, stitch in the ditch on the outside. I don't know if you can see that very well, but the way these trousers are constructed, the waistband is sewn on to the inside first and turned over, and then it's top stitched on the outside, which I thought was quite interesting because normally you're having to stitch in the ditch um, of your waistband and it can look a bit messy and you run the risk that you're not going to catch the inside of the waistband because obviously you're stitching on the top. Whereas if you're doing it this way and you're top stitching, you can see exactly where your stitching is and it's it means that it's possibly slightly neater. Anyway, I just thought it was worth mentioning as a possible alternative um, for when you're making trousers. It had never occurred to me that you could or should do it that way around. So I thought it was quite interesting that that's the way that, that's the way that they've been made. Uh, yeah, so that was good. Put a pair of pyjamas back in my wardrobe to wear this Christmas. So once I'd got the repair bug, um, I moved on to one of my husband's jumpers. And I think I was a bit mad to do it really because I have no idea what I was doing. So the elbows of this wool jumper, which was, where's it from? It's a white stuff jumper, but it's one of um, my husband's warmer jumpers, so he tells me. Um, so I thought, well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, apart from the fact that he'd gone through the elbows, both of the elbows. Um, and our lovely neighbour, who is an amazing stitcher, um, had repaired a couple of our jumpers for us because we've got little holes. She'd mainly just stitched them up, but she'd darned a couple of bits and it made me think, hmm, maybe I should have a go at doing this myself. So I borrowed her darning mushroom and I'll try and stick in a picture of what the elbows looked like before I took to them with needle and thread. Um, and I darned the elbows. Now, I don't know whether you can see the thread slightly different color actually to the main jumper, but that doesn't really matter. There are loads of um, blogs and vlogs and things online about visible mending. And I couldn't quite bring myself for some reason to go at this with a kind of real contrast color thread, probably because I had no idea what I was doing. And at least this way, um, if I've made a good enough job that they're wearable, it doesn't really matter what they look like because it hopefully blends in. But um, yeah, I didn't necessarily do a conventional darn because not only were there big holes, the surrounding fabric was quite well worn. So I just weaved in and in and out, in and out, in and out, um, cross threads like that. Um, and it seems to have done an okay job. He's worn it again now. Again, it was one of these things that was sitting on a pile for ages and ages and ages because he didn't really want to make the holes worse, but we didn't know what to do with them otherwise. So... And then when I'd finished that, um, following also on from my neighbour who debobbled our woolen jumpers when she sent them back to us, I noticed that this was a complete mess. It was really bobbly and horrible. So I took to it one evening with a razor blade. <laughs> and um, be careful if you're going to do that, by the way. And I think I think my neighbour used a like a pen knife craft blade. Um, and I just sat and it took me a whole evening in front of the telly and I debobbled the jumper. It was extremely therapeutic, I will admit, and that was the result. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of wool in there. All of that came off, that was all bobbles. So I can highly recommend if you have woolly jumpers that look a little bit worse for wear and you want to make them look neater and tidier again, find some kind of safe way of shaving off 
the bobbles. It's well worth the time, I think. So on to some actual sewing now and little things that I did to get myself motivated. I was planning to make my kids some jumpers. Uh, jumpers? No. I was planning to make my kids some pyjamas for Christmas and I already had some fabric that I bought from Flamingo Fabrics a while ago. So I used that fabric for one of the pairs and I bought, I'll show you the fabric. I bought this fabric from, I think it was Sew Me Sunshine in the end, to make pyjamas for my little boy. I thought it was really cute. I've got a tiny bit of it left, but I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it. I could make him a t-shirt out of it, possibly just of them with like the front panel with that pattern maybe. Anyway, I made them, sort of twirled, wearable twirl versions first because I really wanted to make sure that they fitted well for the actual garments that I made for their Christmas presents. Um, and I just used some leftover jersey from something else that I had in my stash and also a big maxi dress that I bought from a charity shop last year, I think, um, to make one of the pairs out of there was loads of fabric in that it was just it was just a jersey cotton like a straight a-line dress but there was loads of fabric in it so i trialed the patterns first the patterns i used were the life so savory raglan tea which i've talked about before and i'll link in the description box and um, that's a free pattern and the made by jack's mum lightning leggings which is also a free pattern if you are on the facebook group um, and I hadn't tried that pattern before. What I ended up doing with it, um, because it's, it is designed as a very close fitting legging. So I think what I ended up doing was just slashing the pattern down the middle, opening it out a bit, because they're just, it's just um, a one piece leg. So there's no outer, outer seam on the outer leg. Um, so I just opened them up a tiny bit, just to give them a bit more space. And because they're an elasticated waist, that's no problem. You just gather that all up again at the waist. So that's no issue for the top. I did extend the rise as well. For my little boy, I used the cloth nappy fit version, but even then I decided that I need a little bit, bit more rise. So I extended the rise on both of those pairs, I think by two or three centimeters, having made them 12 versions to start with. So here are the pyjamas. So this is, um, these are my, the ones for my little girl. As I said, this fabric came from Flamingo Fabrics. I bought it last year sometime. And I used um, ribbing for the neckband and also at the cuffs of the trousers and that came from first for fabrics I bought a whole load of ribbing from them towards the end of last year because I knew I was going to have a few things like this and um, so I bought various different colours what I actually did with these to basically try and extend their life They're, the tops are quite long on them the sleeves yeah they've got growing room in that's fine but what I actually did was I extended the cuffs that I put on made them quite long so at the moment they can wear them turned up and as they grow they can just roll them down so they'll fit hopefully for a good few months at least. I nicked that idea from a pair of ready-to-wear pyjamas that someone bought for my daughter I thought it was a really good idea um, and yes you've seen the fabric of this already now so these are the ones for my little boy so he's got some red ribbing with his cars and buses and lorries and trucks. He's vehicle mad my little boy it's a very stereotypical boy he spends most of his time brumming cars and vehicles around the house. And I did the same with his cuffs. I extended those. So he's got loads of growing room in those. I made a few Christmas decorations um, as Christmas presents just by uh, drawing round, I think it was a, a biscuit cutter actually, a Christmas tree shaped biscuit cutter. Um, and I had bought some fat quarters of Christmas fabric and I just sandwiched them together, stitched around them with a straight stitch and then Oh, catching a loop in the top to hang up on a tree. And then I just cut them with pinking shears around the edge to finish them off. And then the last thing I made for Christmas presents um, was uh, a tie for my brother. And now I've got it here because I haven't actually finished it. I gave it to him wrapped up in paper and said, please be careful because it's full of pins <laughs> because I'd only um, half finished hand stitching it together. So I still have it here. <laughs> And I have actually stitched it up now. 
this was the grey, I think it's called the Graham um, tie pattern from Seamwork and it's actually worked out a slimmer fit than I was hoping for um, but I think he'll be okay with that so also the strange thing about it, I did make a tie once before and normally ties have more of the outer fabric on the inside and the lining fabric is set a bit back and this pattern just has a lining piece that goes down to about here and it's exactly the same size as the front piece so as you can see when you um, press it in and turn it in it's actually got a little bit of excess because this is overlapped here to stitch together um, so I don't know whether I might just put in a, um, a tiny little catch stitch just to make sure that the lining doesn't pop out to the outside so yeah so then once you've made it as a tube you just press it in once turn it in again um, and then you just slip stitch hand stitch it all together all the way along now I did say that you were supposed to put some interfacing in it but because I've actually made this out of wool um, I didn't bother it's got enough structure I think to work without it as I say the seamwork have got this pattern and I think there's also a tie pattern that you can buy from sew over it so if you fancied giving a tie a go it's really very straightforward the only thing I haven't done with this one yet is put on um, a loop at the back to catch the free thin side that you end up with when you tie a tie um, and I'm putting that off because it's a slightly fiddly job but I will do it very soon and then I can send that off to my brother and he can have his Christmas present. Now the last two things I've got to talk about are actually things that I made for myself. Hooray! So one of these I made um, quite early on in the autumn and then the pyjamas I made towards the end of 2020. So the first thing I made was the Mandy Boat Tee from Tasuti Patterns. I've made this before as a t-shirt and I just didn't add the sleeve it's got a drop shoulder so I just didn't bother adding the sleeve and this time I made it out of this coral rib knit fabric which I think was from Sew Me Sunshine um, in summer last year so I had planned to make this sort of light jumper version basically of the top rather than um, a sort of long sleeve t-shirt which is what it's sort of intended as I think so what I did um, the same as before I graded from a size one at the bust to a two at the hips but I also kept the size two um, armhole and sleeve and I think I actually also um, didn't taper the sleeve quite as much as on the pattern because I just wanted to know that I could wear a long sleeved top underneath it as it is I haven't really worn it not because I don't want to just because it's not warm enough for this time of year um, and by the time I finished it it was a little bit too cold so I haven't worn it yet but I'm hoping it will be a nice um, kind of spring thing that I can chuck over the top of as I say vest tops t-shirts long sleeve tops as a good layer the second thing I made were some pajamas which I talked about in my last video um, in the end I used the Hudson pants for the trouser bottoms pattern and then I ended up using the Renfrew top from Sewaholic. I'm just going to get the pattern. So here is the pattern. Um, I actually bought this ages and ages ago. I think it was possibly one of the first independent um, pattern company patterns I ever bought and I completely forgot that I'd had it. So when I had a rummage through my pattern stash for a top pattern for the pyjamas, um, I came across this again and I thought well I might as well give it a go. So I've got some notes here because I actually did make a few adjustments to the top pattern. Um, so it actually comes with an option for quite a low round neck, a v-neck or um, a sort of cowl polar neck but not a, not a tight fitting one. So what I actually wanted for the top was a much closer neckline, more like a crew neckline. So I actually just had to do a bit of pattern redrafting for the neckline. Um, but that wasn't too difficult to do. I just brought the shoulders in a little bit and raised the neckline. I was going to do a small bust adjustment, which is what I really needed from the pattern. But doing it on um, a jersey top where there's no, there are no darts, there's no seam lines, um, it just was looking really odd. So in the end, all I did was just scoop out the side seam a little bit more than was on the pattern. So I think the pattern probably came down I think I took about a centimetre or two 
out just at the bust and then braided it back into the waist and that actually worked out fine. What I also found, which is what I found with the plantain tee when I made it, was that it felt a little bit tight across my upper chest and across my back. So I slashed down the whole of the pattern piece, I don't know if you can see that, um, and I spread it at the top, the amount roughly I wanted around here across that top part above your um, above the armpits. Um, and then it's joined back as it was at the bottom. So it's basically just got a tiny little wedge added into it. And of course, when you then mirror that, when you cut that out on the fold, that gives you, how much have I got there? About a centimetre. So it gave me two centimetres on the top and I did the same on the back, two centimetres on the back. So it just gave me a bit extra room across the chest. Um, and I think, I think then I, because the shoulder was right, I then had to correspondingly take that much off the outside of the shoulder so that it didn't make the shoulder drop um, further down. So I didn't want it to do that. The trousers were quite an interesting one. You, um, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I've made a pair of Hudson pants before in this very bright royal blue sweatshirting fabric. And I made those in a size 14, which did correspond to my hip measurement. Um, and I did various things to, to the pattern at that point to make them a bit more sort of baggy all the way down. But when I had put those together the first time I made them, I did end up taking quite a lot out of the front and back crotch seams up to the waist, um, which kind of meant to me that I just needed to take them down a size or two across the hip area because they're actually um, designed with quite a bit of ease across the hips. So what I ended up doing actually was recutting the pattern in a size 10. So two sizes down, I also decided pretty much to stick with the rise as it was. When I made them before, I added quite a lot. I think I added four centimetres to the rise. I decided this time to just go with it and see how they worked out. I think actually I possibly added one centimetre of rise because by the time I had taken them down two sizes um, from a size 14 to a size 10, the rise obviously also reduced quite considerably. So I decided to add just a centimetre on from the size 10 rise, bearing in mind that when I made them before, it was in a size 14 and I added four centimetres. Um, and actually they worked out really well and they were much higher than I expected them to be. I'll show you a, a picture or a video of me wearing them so you can have a look and see what you think. But I'm really, really happy with the fit. It's much more what I was hoping for than my original pair of Hudson pants um, for these pyjamas. So I was really, really pleased with what I did to make those. I didn't bother sewing the channels around the waistband um, or putting any ties in it because, to be honest, on my other trousers, I just, I don't use the ties at all. Um, and they, it kind of looks nice, but nobody's going to see my pyjamas apart from me. So I didn't bother with that bit. So I think that's all I've got to share from my sewing from the end of 2020. Um, I really did find that those few little bits of mending and the very small little projects really helped me feel like I was achieving something. I know lots of people find it really helpful to get back into their sewing by picking a project and just spending an hour here and there every so often and just seeing their progress in that way on one project. I just didn't have the mental capacity really to even start tackling anything like that. So having little things that I started and then in an hour I had finished and I had achieved really helped me to still feel connected to sewing and the craft and other people who were still sewing that I was watching on YouTube, for example. And also, you know, know that I'd done something that had been sitting in a pile for ages and ages. That was a really good way to make me get on and do those little things. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been up to over the last few months. I am planning to do a make nine for 2021. I've not done one of those before, but um, I'm hoping to come back soon with that when I've got that all planned out. And also sort of January, February sewing plans, which will hopefully include one or two of the things on my make nine. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's really nice to be back. I feel like I'm just starting to get back into the groove of nattering at a camera. 
please do subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of my videos when they come out. Um, give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. And also, please do leave me a comment. Um, have you got a make nine? What's on your list? Have you been struggling with your sewing motivation? And what have you been doing to get yourself going again? I'd just love to hear from you, hear how you're getting on and what your plans are for 2021 for your sewing. So hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bye.